Welcome everyone to another Malware Geek Review. Today we're going to be taking a look at Panda Free Antivirus. This is a cloud-based anti-malware solution and it has been a while since I've taken a look at Panda, so I figured today was a good day to do so. If we dive into the product and we take a look at its usability and its user interface, this is not my favorite user interface ever. Um, I think navigating around can be a little bit of a chore, but it's not the worst either. It is nice that they do have a scan button right here on the main user interface where you can start a scan of the computer. You can also access the antivirus settings here on the right hand side next to the scan button. Also up here in the left hand corner you do have uh, another menu where you can access the settings, help, security news, um, ideas, and you can find out about the product. I like the settings button to be a little bit more... Um, out in the open, easier for the user to find, but again, it's a matter of preference and it's not the worst I've seen. So if we go into the antivirus settings here, it tells you when the last scan was performed. You can also start a scan from here. You can also schedule a scan. It tells you the events of the day, the month, and the week, as well as the total, and how many files are in quarantine. You can also turn the antivirus on and off from here Going into the settings, if we go into the antivirus settings, here you have your different um, options. You can enable or disable the permanent protection, scanning of compressed files, which is off by default. They do have behavioral blocking, so that should be interesting to see what happens in the zero-day component of this test. They have behavioral analysis. Um, you can turn the setting on where you want it to ask before it neutralizes a virus or malware, detection of potentially unwanted program which is on by default, um, warnings upon detection, um, block files from running until a result is obtained. You can change this setting from 30, it goes all the way up to 60, 30 is the default. Um, exclusions and on-demand settings as well, and your uh, quarantine, how often you want it to empty out the quarantine. USB protection, which basically blocks um, malware from loading automatically from a, U a USB drive. And you have your process monitor options here, which isn't a lot. You can just turn it on or off and uh, monitor uh, URLs that are accessed by processes. So, not uh, not too overly exciting in terms of the options for the product. The general settings there, uh, that tab that I didn't go to, just has some uh, general user interface and you know account settings. So, anyways, if we take a look at its resource usage, it's not too bad. Its URL filter is actually taking up the most amount of memory there, but uh, overall, I haven't noticed a system slowdown or anything like that. So it's not. Uh, it's not too bad on in terms of the resource usage. So as usual here, I have uh, some malware links that are currently active on the internet. So we're going to see how well Panda can protect us. I did install the Panda toolbar here, which helps with URL filtering and that sort of stuff. Panda has been known to have good web signatures, so we will see how well it does today. So here's our first file, cryptid.exe. Kind of sounds like ransomware to me, but who knows. So while that file is loading up, we will grab the next malicious link. It's almost done here, so we will try to run it. Looks like it was moved or deleted, and yes, it was a Trojan, and it was blocked by Panda. Actually, Pan deleted it, but still, same thing. Didn't get a chance to load up there, so that's good. Here's our next file. And that one was also caught by Panda. Also a Trojan. And it has been removed. So we are two for two so far. Here's our next file. taking a while for that one to load. There it is. Let's try to run it. 
And it looks like it has been caught as well. Yep. So far, so good. Panda's doing a good job at blocking these files. fmouse.exe, whatever that is. It is taking a while for these URLs to load, so I think Panda's probably checking with the cloud in terms of the uh, website, if it's legit or not. All these are not legit, but... Looks like that one got caught by the web filter, yes. Contains malware and exploits, and Panda has blocked the website. This one, I believe, was some sort of an infected page. Not sure if it's actually infected anymore. So we will move on. I can grab another link. There's no, not a big deal there. Here's our next file. That one looks like it has also been caught. Didn't receive an alert from Panda, but the malware did not load either. So it seems like their alerts are a tad bit delayed. Not the worst I've seen. The worst I've seen so far is Norton, and their alerts are absolutely terrible, but um, not the worst I've seen. There we go. It deleted a or neutralized a virus. So... So far, nothing has been able to load into memory. We'll see if Panda can uh, keep that up. Here's the next uh, malware sample. Looks like that one has also been blocked. So we will move along. I'm sure Panda will alert us. Yep. It's infected as a Trojan, wants me to restart the PC, I will do that after um, after we finish up the test here. Here's our next uh, malware file. That one again looks like it has been caught. Yep. Here's our next file, it is a screensaver. And it has been blocked by Panda. Here's our final link. And it's dead. So let me grab uh, a couple more uh, malware links and I'll be back. Okay, so I grabbed a couple more uh, links here. So we're going to try these out. And see how well uh, Panda does. Here's our first file, 160.exe. That totally sounds legit. Couldn't be downloaded, so I'm not sure if Panda removed it. Yes, it did. Okay, let's try this link. O2Bill is actually a document file. I'm going to try and save it on the desktop. Let's see if uh, Panda catches it. It's probably uh, some sort of uh, doc file that loads up with a macro. Let's see if... Well, Panda says it's clean, but I have no way to actually uh, test the file. So let me grab another link here. Okay, so here's another link. Let's try this one. And it's been blocked by Panda. I believe that was an exploit. So, looks like a uh, clean sheet there for uh, Panda. So, uh, but I will restart the machine and I'm just going to do a quick scan with Zaman and Hitman Pro. But I didn't see any malware load up, but. Because it wanted me to restart the machine, I'm going to go ahead and do so, and then I'll do a quick scan, and I'll be back with the results. Okay, so Hitman Pro and Zemana finished scanning, and we just have some false positives here. I believe all of these items are related to the Panda toolbar. So, same thing with uh, Zemana. So, nothing really got through. Um, like I said, those are just false positives. 
uh, identifying the uh, Panda toolbar. So it's not malware because they ask you if you want to install it during the installation and you can easily uninstall it. So no big deal there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my pack of malware, disable the Panda protection temporarily, stick it on the desktop, and then we're going to see what the overall detection ratio is and how well it handles unknown malware. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I have dragged the malware folder onto the desktop. We have 646 samples this time. So I've temporarily disabled uh, Panda's real-time protection, so I'm going to go ahead and do a right-click scan, remove the threats, and then I'll be back with the results. Okay, so Panda has finished scanning, and we have 89 items left over. We started with 646, which translates to a detection ratio of 86.2%. Not bad, that's about, you know, above average. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run some of these files that are left over and see how well Panda can handle them. All shields are active on the system that were active during the uh, previous portion of the test. So let's start running some of these and see how well Panda can protect us. Let's open up the task manager just so we can see the malware running. We do have this one that started up. Let's try this one. That one is also in memory and it has deleted itself, which is never a good sign. So I'm just going to choose some of these at random and run some, and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so I've run a few of these. I'm not receiving any kind of alerts from Panda, and now the machine is starting to slow down. So we probably have some malicious behavior going on. Okay, so I've run some of these now, so I'm going to let this machine run for a minute, and uh, then I'll be back uh, with the results in just a minute. That one looks like it got blocked. Yeah, Panda just deleted it, it looks like. Yeah, so it caught that one. That's an encrypted archive, that's weird. Okay, so... Okay, so I'm going to let the machine run for a minute, and then I'll be back... Uh, GTA 5 download assistant. Yeah, that's probably not legit. So uh, I'm going to let this machine run, and then I'll be back, uh, and uh, we'll do a scan with Hitman Pro and Zamana. Okay, so Hitman Pro and Zamana have finished scanning, and this is not a good result at all. Um, we have a huge amount of infections detected by Hitman Pro, and Zamana has also detected an infection. So let me just go over this infection and what I think is going on. So pretty much every part of the virtual machine in terms of uh, virtual box is infected. But that could easily be any process. Also, Panda has been infected. Uh, Bitdefender uh, identifies it as the Cinewall Trojan, which is a fairly well-known piece of malware. And it has also infe infected the panda urlsys file. So it looks like we have some sort of a patching virus on here that has infected a bunch of um, virtual box um, files. Also... Panda has been infected as well, so we can no longer trust the URL filtering 
which is part of the antivirus. Um, so that's disappointing, very disappointing that it didn't catch that uh, malware. Because it's uh, replicated like crazy, and Zamana also found that the uh, Panda URL filtering uh, sys file is infected. So, my overall thoughts on Panda Cloud Antivirus. Um, definitely not going to recommend it at this time. That's what it's going to get, is a no-go. Simply because um, part of it was disabled by a piece of malware. Um, the URL filtering, despite the fact it's a toolbar and a add-on, it has been infected by malware. And now the system is basically heavily infected and I can't really trust Panda because it's infected. So now the malware could be doing whatever it wants, basically. So when I'm browsing the web or whatever, you know, it could be doing whatever kind of malicious things it wants to do. So Panda Cloud Antivirus is a no-go right now. Um, I consider the machine disabled now because um, we have a patching virus so it can infect any executable that it wants. I believe it's still running around because we have this running, which looks kind of fishy. Uh, command prompt just running in Windows looks kind of fishy to me. So it seems like it may try to infect other executable files and DLLs and that sort of stuff. So I consider the machine disabled and I consider the anti-malware solution also to be disabled by malware because part of it has been infiltrated by uh, malicious software. So anyways, that's my review of Panda Cloud Antivirus. Um, it gets a no-go. I'm not going to say it's a total fail because it did get rid of some of the malware that was in memory and neutralized it, but um, it's definitely uh, not recommended at this point. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys later.